Welcome to Rudolf Valentino Connections. This is a preview video of my latest blog post entitled November 27, 1921, The Start of Chic Week Follows the President-Setting New York Premiere and Nationwide Release of the Chic. In my previous post, I detail the dueling Los Angeles premieres Rudolf Valentino enjoyed on October 30, 1921. Uh, the Western premiere of Camille, as well as the pre-release debut of The Chic. The Chic then premiered in New York in two theaters on November 6th. The day after the premiere, the ad for The Chic in the New York Tribune heralded the first day attendance, which was 20,000 people on the opening day. And it shared the ad space with another Paramount film. But by the following week, uh, the ad for The Chic on November 13th was far bigger and featured exciting descriptions of the film as the picture entered its second week at the Times Square Rialto in Manhattan. Now, like her Los Angeles counterpart a week, week, a week earlier, um, New York Tribune critic Harriet Underhill panned the storyline of the Sheik in a review the day after the film opened, and this clipping um, goes through her um, Description of the film as being really silly and um, goes, goes into the whole thing. And it's, it's really quite a fun read, actually, when she writes. But she did um, seem to soften her criticism as she commented, commented, the Sheik almost got us at certain moments in the performance yesterday at the Rivoli Theater. It probably, it's probably that this was because the title role was played by Ruta Valentino. And most any woman would try to bear it with equanimity if he carried her away on his Arabian steed to be the queen of the caravan. caravan. Um, she commented that Agnes Ayres really didn't do anything in particular, um, but she really did focus on Valentino. She noted that he had very wide eyes that actually reminded her of Theta, Theta Barra. And, um, but overall, she was impressed by his screen presence and she called him a fine young animal with a sense of humor and um, a little talent for vamping. Um, and she had feared that the portrayal might be, might be a conservative and dignified person, but she was relieved that it wasn't. And I um, have the clippings there which talks about this. Now, a New York Times critic, name unknown, wrote a review that could be sort of described as tepid at best. Um, he kind of referred to the novel that was not very good, and um, he admitted that he had not read the, the, the book, but he said, um, you know, I, he knew he would have to see the picture sooner or later, and he asked, isn't that enough? Um, he said that both Agnes Ayres and Rudolf Valentino um, could make the characters seem real in a picture, which gives any character a chance to seem real. Um, so it wasn't a very glowing review. He sort of passed off the whole thing. Now, the New York Daily News critic, who wrote under the name of McElliot, was unhappy over the fact that the picture had been denatured. Now, the, the title of the article there was called The Sheik Has Been Denatured for the Movies. And, of course, this refers to the fact that um, the, movie, the, the film had been cleaned up um, because the novel had been pretty risque. Um, and in this clip, he, he does say that subtleties of change, mental and moral cannot be photographed. Therefore, the sheik has had some formaldehyde poured into its alcohol. Um, he talks about the crowds and how the country club darlings were, who now in fur coats have, coats, excuse me, have joined the mob. Now, he also had a little um, jab at Valentino. He said the picture is beautiful as to photography and as to Agnes Ayers playing the trap Diana. She and Mr. Valentino are worth looking at, whatever the story. However, I like Rodolfo not so much in one of his turbans. The other is quite becoming. Now, on November 20th, 1921, The Sheik was released at over 250 theaters across the country. And newspapers like the Arkansas Democrat announced Sheik Week, which had been declared by Paramount Pictures. Um, the... Sheik Week started on November 27th for that week, the following week. Now, um, these two little clips um, from two different newspapers a month apart, really, talk about some of the numbers. And you can see, if you, when you read the blog, that the um, second clip here um, 
uh, recorded more numbers. And you have to wonder, well, where do these numbers come from? Between Sunday, November 27th and Sunday, December 25th. Well, the numbers came from a press release produced by Paramount Pictures that would become part of ads and also picked up as quote unquote news stories by papers across the nation. Now here's an example of an ad from um, Illinois, uh, the Bijou, Bijou Theater. And as you can see uh, down in the right hand corner there at the lower part, um, it, it says the sheet played in one week at New York Rivoli and Rialto theaters to 112,625 people. And the small print there d really describes how these numbers stack up against things like boxing matches, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I've included clips from another newspaper which actually printed this press release uh, on its own without an ad. And um, that actually is readable. And it does describe more of these um, um, events that the, the Sheik's attendance is compared to. So it's very interesting uh, what the Sheik's attendance was compared to. Um, it's a fun read. Now, headlines from newspapers across the country reflected the excitement and anticipation as the Sheik opening rolled out across the country. And I have a, a selection of them here, just a few, but they were all pretty um, excited, such as Arabian romance makes thrilling drama for screen, spectacular settings, a feature of the Sheik, plot one of interest in South Bend, Indiana. Another one, the Sheik, tremendous in power, wildly exciting at the Opera House that was in Bangor, Maine. And I go down to the last one, which is at last the Sheik with romance thrills in Valentino at the Regent, and that's that. That was in Wichita. <laughs> so the headline from the Wichita Eagle um, sort of lets the readers know that um, something is really going to be fun to see. Now, um, although the New York critic felt the film was denatured, the Wichita, Wichita Eagle Wichita Eagle columnist was careful about telling readers how the film had survived the state board while letting parents know that even so, the film really wasn't for children. So I, I have here the clippings which give the bulk of the review and it starts off with the, um, the um, lyrics to the song, pale hands I loved, you know, the one that Valentina would later sing. And um, they do spell the name Ahmed incorrectly, of course, but underneath there's an ad for the um, presentation at the Regent. And you can see the ad there now is uh, Shriek for the Sheik will seek you too. When an Arab sees a woman, he wants to, he, he takes her. So it, it's really revved up um, the ad. There's a, a picture of the embrace and, um, and Agnes Ayers is still listed um, first though. Um, she was a leading lady and um, it's a fun ad to read. Now, what really caught my eye by sheer luck, I happened to find a little squib, a tiny little squib, that had the little title, The Sheik Attracts Attention of College. Hmm. The Sheik has attracted so much attention in Chicago that a professor of psychology at Northwestern University has requested his classes to visit the photo play. Hmm. We will never know exactly what that psychology professor discussed with his students after they saw the Sheik. But we know that now, 100 years later, we know that the arrival of the Sheik not only thrust Valentino into a new level of fame, but it also triggered a wave of reaction that really turned the spotlight onto the shifting relationships between women and men. And of course, it was the newly liberated 1920s, the beginning of the Jazz Age. Um, so things were really opening up. But society hadn't moved that far as a story had to work around the subject of interracial marriage. So one can think that maybe a hundred years later, we are still talking about the Sheik. And although it may seem to some a relic from a distant age, the echoes of the themes it presented are still with us today. Hope you check out the blog and uh, take a look at um, some of these ads and um, um, headlines. They're very interesting. But there's also a note that I include here because Emily Leader in her biography, Dark Lover, The Life and Death of Ruta Valentino, mistakenly states that the film premiered in New York on October 30th. 
Um, that's definitely an error. So I just wanted to point that out to you, the viewer. Thank you for listening, and I hope you visit the blog, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.